A bit more build-up then for the Champions Cup weekend. Eight massive games in the most elite club tournament in world rugby. It's as good as rugby gets and in no particular order. Uh, the teams are out. Let's have a look. Firstly, Northampton against Munster. I'm so excited about this game. In the video I did the other day, I characterised this one as Courtney Laws versus Peter Romani. It, it looks like Peter Romani may well retire from rugby full stop. Haven't had that confirmed at this point as a record. Uh, Courtney Laws, we know, will be leaving Northampton next season. So potentially, these two guys are playing their last Champions Cup game, maybe ever, and quite possibly in the colours of the club that they've represented, man and boy. So, and they're both playing opposite each other. That's the story of the game for me, Peter Armani against Courtney Laws. And Courtney Laws is in, Peter Armani's in. I'll come to Munster in a second. But for Northampton, it's always the back row I look at first. They've got some riches there. And Laws, Ludlam, Sam Graham getting the nod with Joanna Augustus on the bench. That's some power not to have in your starting 15. And Tom Pearson, not in the match day 23. I'm assuming he's injured. Alex Mitchell, though, is on the bench. That's a boost. He has been injured. He's back and will play some part, but no George Furbank, which is a bit of a blow. When you move over to Munster, man, that team looks good. And Tyg Byrne and RG Snayman, is that the best lock pairing in the Champions Cup this weekend? I think there's a good argument to say that it is. That is as good as a lock pairing gets. That is some serious heat that Munster are going to be bringing. Peter Armani, as I mentioned, is it going to be the last dance for him in this competition? A competition which, I mean, he's, he's he's had success in the URC last year and early on in his career, back in the early 2010s, when they won the Magnus League. Munster, a team that you think about when you think of this competition, Peter Romani's never had the success in it that he would have wanted when he started his career. So there's some unfinished business still. Uh, Zebo on the wing, that's that's an interesting call. He's a big-time player, and that, that fly-half battle between Jack Crowley and Finn Smith is one to watch. Moving on to Cape Town and the Stormers against La Rochelle. Uh, and it's, it's the bench that I look at for the Stormers, and Franz Malherbe and Hakchiva Deamani. That's some, that's some firepower to let loose off your bench, among other names there. And... That front row battle, the scrummaging battle, is going to be a really interesting one to watch. Franz Malerba being let loose on that La Rochelle front row when they got a bit tired. That could be a game-changing moment in the match. Evan Roos at number eight. He's got a big year ahead of him. That, that South African number eight jersey is up for grabs. This is the kind of game where he can make a performance up against Gregory Aldrit where he could, he could make a statement and, and take a step towards convincing people that he is the boy for that number eight jersey for the Stormers. That is a, a very, very handy team. And good hot conditions by the look of it, dry conditions, mean that they'll want to move those big guys around. And when it comes to La Rochelle, they do have some big guys. Not a very easy team sheet to read, is it, that one? But um, if, if you can't squint and see some of those names, they've got... Awini Atonio and Will Skelton in their front five. They've got Lavani Bottier and Gregory Aldrit in their back row. I mean, that is four guys in a pack. Well, the rest of the pack's not too shabby either, but that is four guys of the highest quality in the pack. They're going to be bringing a serious physical threat to the Stormers. And behind the scrum, well, I'd say that Jonathan Dante's the one to watch. La Rochelle's form's kind of been like Jonathan Dante. Go back a year and he was the best inside centre in Europe, arguably. But he's not playing at that level now. La Rochelle are not playing at that level now. If he has a good game, La Rochelle are in business. If not, the door is open for the Stormers. They, they beat Oyana last week, but they lost their last away game. Can they travel and get a win in Cape Town? That is going to be a huge game. I can't wait. Uh, moving on to Toulouse, the French Giants, the most successful team in this competition. And again, look at the bench. Thibaut Flamont, Julian Marchand, two awesome players, French front five players on the bench. They've got Antoine Dupont. They've got Roman Intermac, 9 and 10. I just do not see Racing having a hope in this one, especially when you look at the Racing team. I mean, just look at the names in that Toulouse side. But when you look at Racing, they do not have their 9 and 10. Dupont Untermac versus, well, it should have been Legarek and Gibert, but it's Labelle and Tristan Tedder, who Tristan Tedder is a good player. Mostly plays fullback for Racing, but he's stepping in at 10. They've got good players. I just I just cannot see Racing winning this one. 
And I think it's the same when you look at the, the Leinster-Leicester match. Now, there was a lot of chat before the game in the last couple of days about injuries in the Leicester ranks. Andrew Porter being one of the names. He's on the team sheet and that is an international side, pretty much top to bottom. Yes, no Gary Ringrose still. There's a couple of others that, that aren't available, but that is an outstanding team. Jimmy O'Brien would be another one, but that is an outstanding team, especially the pack. And yeah, you, you think Leicester need to have all of their players available and playing really well to avoid a repeat of the last two years where Leinster have won comfortably last year, less comfortably away from home two years ago. I was there in the Aviva Stadium last year and it was one-way traffic. And yeah, if, Le if Leicester want to avoid the same fate, they need all their players available. And Leinster have most of their injury worries, not a problem. Leicester are without Oli Chesham, George Martin and Tommy Raphael. Three guys in the pack that had fantastic Six Nations, would feel confident going up against their Irish counterparts and they're not in the side. And I think as good as the players in that Leicester team are, I just don't see them. I don't. I, I think the odds on a Leicester upset will lengthen after seeing the team sheets. So that's how I see that one going. And I kind of see it going the same way with the Bulls against Leon as well. Interesting selection for the Bulls. I always look to their back row first. And Elric Lowe is, is a guy, again, much like Evan Ruse. He's a guy that's on a lot of people's radar when you think about the Springbok back row, not just for this year, but beyond in the, in the coming years. And he's a guy of immense talent. He's wearing the number eight jersey alongside Kurt Seer and Ludwig. That, that's got some lovely balance in that back row. Two co-captains as well, with Nortier and Kurt Seer. I, I never like co-captains, but interesting to see how that one plays out. So yeah, no Hanukkah for this one. So Elric Lowe has got a chance to make a statement himself and I'm going to be watching him and Evan Roos very closely in their games. Kanan Moody at 13. He's played there for the box. He's played there a bit. I think most people prefer him on the wing. I think that's where you get the best out of him. Gans, I'm assuming he's injured, is he, for the Bulls? Uh, but Vili LaRue, I mean, what, what a class player to, uh, to have in your back three when you do have the odd injury. So Leon... They haven't even announced their team yet as I record this video. That sort of tells you where their mind is at. And when I also look at the, the group that travelled to Pretoria, there's no Niniashvili in that group. There's no Semi Randrandra. There's no Kuiu, Kapoku, Taufa Fenua, Lombe, Rates. They have left some of their biggest players back home in France. I think that says to me, while they are sending some decent players, De Mortier, Bamba, Goujon, and a bunch of other good players, they're leaving arguably their best players back in Lyon, which I think says to me, they don't fancy their chances, so they're not gonna bother racking up the air miles in the legs of some of their big players, and they're just gonna take a rest. So I see Bulls winning that one. I thought it could be competitive. I don't think it will be now. Quinns against Glasgow, this one will be competitive and the teams coming out has only made me more excited. This is the first game of the weekend, it's later tonight, so you may the game may already have happened by the time you're watching this video. By the way, if you do watch this video and you want to really help me, I would love your help to try and reach as many rugby fans as possible. Hitting that thumbs up button, smashing that like button, that really, really helps the algorithm and helps me reach other rugby fans. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if I'd earn your subscription. Uh, Quinns have got that 8, 9, 10, 12 combo. Uh, Don Brandt, Kerr, Smith, Esther Hazen. That is as good as any in this competition. That axis is the fulcrum of what will always be a dangerous team when they've got that in, as the, the brains of their team. It's, uh, it's exceptional. Uh, around it, will it be good enough? Well, do you know one interesting thing, and I wonder if this is kind of a, a sort of Rassi Rasmus sort of move, that are they starting with a couple of their best players on the bench so they finish with their best players? Joe Marler and Joe Launchbury are the two that I'm looking at there on the bench. When you look at Glasgow, it's a very good team that's going to be going to the stoop in West London. Sione Tuipolotu being back is a huge boost. Hugh Jones is out, that's a shame, so we don't get the Huey Pilotu scotland combo. But Stafford McDowell recently played again for Scotland in the midfield. Uh, that's He's a pretty handy replacement there. It's an international class back row, isn't it? Uh, and there's a couple of guys in that side as well. 
just on the fringes of the Scotland national team who have points to prove, looking at Johnny Matthews, who may feel he deserves to get some game time during the Six Nations. So two more games to cover. Uh, Bordeaux. Both fly halves unavailable, unavailable for this game between Bordeaux and Saracens. No Matthew Jalabert for Bordeaux, but they do have that back line stacked with French internationals. Peno, BLBRA, Moafana, Deportier, Lucu. So this is a class side. I do think this will be closer than a lot of people maybe suggest. Certainly much closer than the pool match between the two of them, where it was an absolute beatdown in Bordeaux. Saracens got humped, frankly. Um, they are without Owen Farrell. That's a massive blow. And it could be Owen Farrell's last chance to play in a, in a Saracens jersey in this competition if they do lose. A jersey he wore when they've won the tournament. He's been an absolute legend for Saracens and it's not the way he would want his Champions Cup journey to end. Will that add an extra little bit of motivation for Saracens to make sure they get another week and give Owen Farrell the chance to get back? I have heard that Owen Farrell's injury is around about a month. So I think actually... He's probably done for this uh, for this Champions Cup season, which is a real shame. He'll have to look to next year with Racing 92 in this competition and focus on the Premiership. But yeah, we don't get Jalabert against Farrell. We do get some brilliant matchups elsewhere. And again, when you look at the bench of the Saracens team and you see Tom Willis, who spent some time at Bordeaux last season, of course, and Juan Martin Gonzalez, that is like outstanding talent to have coming off the bench, especially when you consider they've already lost Andy Christie to injury this weekend. Saracens have got some proper class. Canal is good in the 10 shirt, masterminder performance. I I basically wrote Saracens off thinking about it this week, but I'm looking at that team now and actually I think, I think Saracens can pull a surprise off. I don't think they will in Bordeaux. That home crowd I think will, will get the help the Bordeaux team get a win, but I think that one could be very close. I'm looking forward to that game a lot. And finally, Exeter against Bath. Exeter, a team stacked full of youngsters and the talent that they've got, that they've developed, that they've spotted and developed is, is absolutely amazing. Well, look no further than Emmanuel Faye Wabosu, David Jenkins, Chris Chunza, all internationals now, but there's others. Russ Tuima is looking like he could be a potential international. Ethan Roots has made it into the England team and then Ross Vincent for Italy as well. So this is a young team, a completely rejuvenated side. They, they were fearless out in Toulon and they need that sort of sort of a performance to overcome Bath who even though they're away from home I think Bath will be favourites for this match because they just have pedigree right across their team and it's the two fly halves when you look at them Harvey Skinner for Exeter Finn Russell for Bath it's you know these are the games these are the money matches where a signing like Finn Russell repays itself and I think I think he will mastermind a, a Bath win actually possibly one of the most significant players on the pitch, Thomas de Toy. He's looking every bit the uh, the Springbok front rower this season when I've watched him play in the Prem. I think he's going to be in a, a South Africa jersey again this summer. He looks awesome. And Bath will want to set a foundation with the scrum. Let that back row wreak havoc. Ted Hill, Sam Underhill, Alfie Barbary. We've been waiting for that back line for ages. Now they're all fit and available. <laughs> Let's see what they can do. And there's some firepower behind. Ollie Lawrence, Joe Thock and a singer. My goodness me, it's a good team. Exeter are going to need to pull something pretty special out of the bag. They're capable of it, but I would probably edge for Bath for that one. There you go. That is the Champions Cup for this weekend. Bring it on. It's only hours away as I record this from the first game. If you haven't already, smash that like button, thumbs up, leave your comments, hit subscribe, enjoy the rugby. I'll be here covering it all weekend long and I'll see you on the next one.